following the theme of the last video, I went down to our military museum, um, which was done by a colleague of mine, Gaylord Kelshall, fantastic museum. Gaylord is famous for writing probably one of the best books on the German submarines of World War II. Um, but anyway, back on topic, I knew that in that museum they had a pintle and gudgeon from the HMS Janus. And I wanted to see how those real pieces um, compared to the, the items described in David and Greg's uh, book. So off we went and this is what we found. Today we are very lucky. We are actually going to look at parts of the HMS um, Janus or um, Dromedary as she was called when she was renamed. And these are the rudder pieces. They are bronze. And you can see they're quite different than the horseshoe that came from the same ship, which I've shown you in previous videos. Um, all beautifully made and cursed. And in absolutely fantastic shape. These are the pintles. And um, this, oh, this must weigh about 200 pounds. Some bronze pins that came from the same ship. Um, they were dove and brought to the uh, museum from Tristram Ali, an accountant and, and fun diver, um, who's been giving his finds to the museum over the years. The one major difference between the drawing and the actual gudgeon is that it's not, the stern post is not flat as it's shown here. There's actually an angle um, in the stern post um, which may bring um, the hole closer to the pin. And then on the pintle, um, this curve is certainly shown in there, but the, you may remember I was talking about if the rudder was tapered. There is actually a slight taper uh, parallel to each other right down. So that clearly means that the rudder was not shaped in any way, shape or form. Um, coming in this way, but there is no taper at the end of the pintle. And in fact, the outer edges of the pintle here and here. My guess um, for the, the tapering at this end is that because most of the strain on the piece would have been on this edge right here, they wanted to make this fatter because this, as it goes along, is tapered down right down to three quarters of an inch. Um, at this point in here on the actual um, pintle, it's two inches. So the taper was inside um, and the, again the two outside pieces parallel. So the taper was cut into the rudder. Um, the rudder itself was not tapered. Now that we've got that history lesson out of the way, let's get back to the purpose of this video, which is to make up the gudgeons and pintles for the model. I always thought that my soldering skills were pretty good until I started making the part and I found I ran in, quickly ran into a problem because I actually need to solder the part twice. And what happened is when I went to solder the second time, I found that the first part melted. Um, it wasn't long before I was on YouTube, University of YouTube, my solution to most problems. And there I found that in fact, in, in the jewelry business, there are solders that melt at four different temperatures, hard, medium, soft, and very soft. And so that allows you to start with hard and end up with very soft, and that allows you on the same piece, close to one another. You could solder four times without melting the previous solder that you used. But before we do that, um, let me take you through the equipment that I've bought. And um, again, the, the challenge of you're going to buy a whole new set of tools, learn a whole new set of skills, and it's just so easy to waste money. And so uh, let's start with um, the, the source of the heat. Um, this is what I ended up with. Um, this is a little Smith torch setup, and it uses a medical oxygen 
um, piece of equipment. You can pick this up anywhere. Um, this was the second oxygen tank I actually acquired, a bigger tank, and it was just impractical to have in the shop. This is perfect. I actually got two of these. Um, and then from the gas point of view, um, I have a settling, and really what I'm going to be using is propane. Um, although, you know, I do tell you I will always buy the best. Um, when I started to see the cost of all these very com various components, I did buy the cheap version of the Smith's Little Torch. My plan was that when I got everything working, um, I expect this to give trouble, um, although so far it has not. And I'll simply buy um, the US made Smith's Little Torch. Having said that, um, no matter how much I try, um, advice is always difficult to get. And I ended up with some bad purchases. This is a valve that will fit right on the tank, the oxygen tank. Again, if I bought a small oxygen tank, this would screw onto it. Because I'm using this setup, I had to modify the, the stand um, for it to work on this cylinder. So again, this doesn't work. Um, and then I bought both the oxygen and gas, LPG gas cylinders. This doesn't fit <laughs> all the stuff I bought. So that's wasted money. Um, what I did get was the spark arresters. And that just simply prevents... Uh, any chance of flame coming back. I mean, a little shop like this, I suppose it's it's quite important. And um, the only other thing I bought, which again, um, uh, this is to light the flame. And this really turned out to be, I'm not going to use this. Um, what I use is a simple candle which I light and that allows me to light the torch anytime that I want. Now I'm not going to take you through how to solder um, anything. There are some wonderful videos which I'll put a note that you can go and look at. These are the experts, these are the people I'm learning from. So rather than let an amateur try to teach you something, if you want to develop the skill, go straight to the experts. The, the other thing that I realize is that this is not soldering um, using a soldering iron. This is actually jewelry making. So down to my friend Bruce Mute, B&M Jewelers, and Bruce was kind enough to bring me into the back of the shop and take me through. And so he's been advising me on what to get. Um, some of the interesting little items that I've picked up, um, which I had found before, this is a, a third hand. Um, uh, this little vise um, that's pretty important. I had to develop uh, something called a pickle. And a pickle is uh, a low acid that cleans the parts. And of course, everything that was recommended, I couldn't get here in Trinidad. Turns out this is sodium bisulfate which is used in pools to lower the pH. And so I've got a 500 year supply. Um, fortunately for me, I do have a pool, so I can use the, the rest of this. But you really need a tiny little bit of um, sodium. And that makes up a pickle. And the pickle is simply a glass of stuff that you mix and it cleans the, the piece of bronze so that when you go to solder it, it's absolutely clean. Again, there are lots of videos on pickling. Um, right now, I'm trying to get a baby's bottle warmer, which I'll use because it works better when you heat it. Um, so you'll see that at some point in time in the, in the future. And once it's done, you rinse it out in clear water to stop the, the um, acid working. The other challenge is fluxes. And this is my old flux that I've used for years. Works great with wire. It does not work with um, 
with the torch. And then I bought all sorts of different fluxes. Um, this is for brass. Um, I probably have five or six different fluxes and neither one of them works. Um, they kept recommending borax and I have ordered um, a little pyramid of borax and the dish that comes with it and that's going to become my flux. It should be here next week. Of course when you're soldering um, you need something that's going to block um, where you don't want solder to, to run and they kept referring to this um, compound called okra and another one called rouge. Well, I guess I could have ordered the okra on Amazon, but I was told it really is uh, paint used in watercolor paints. So again, down to the art store and I was able to get some yellow okra and acrylic paint. I'm hoping it's the same thing. Um, if not, another friend who's a jeweler, um, she's offered me some rouge. And again, she says she has a lifetime supply. So it would be no problem for me to get it. Then you need something that you're going to, to solder on. And this ceramic um, perforated uh, base is what is recommended. Um, of course, I've covered it in a little frame because it's so fragile. Almost everybody that's demonstrating this, um, you see it cracked in some way, shape or form. They continue to use it, but I just thought, I know I'm going to bounce this around, so I'll surround it and give it a little protection, and you can see it's already got a few burn marks on it. Um, in terms of where I operate, you'll realize that I built a mobile station. Um, you know I like everything on wheels. So in preparation for the pendant motors that I have coming down and to make a soldering station, I made up this two-tier system and I put an aluminum plate on it uh, to protect the base of it from the flame. Um, everything that I need for soldering is now included in the base and so I have all sorts of lovely things. Again, another third hand, um, all types of solder, um, solder paste. Um, we went through the three types of or four types of solder. The same thing happens in paste. You can actually get hard, medium and soft solder paste. Um, I had previously upgraded my soldering iron. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to use it for stuff again. Um, this one actually has a temperature control on it um, and lots of little brass pieces. One of the things that Bruce had suggested is to hold pieces. Um, that's going to be quite a, a challenge to hold them tightly together. And he suggested using some plaster of Paris to make temporary molds. Um, I have made one and it didn't work very well. But I would say that's probably just a learning issue. The only other pieces that I have, which is on the way down to me, is I have three soldering picks um, that they suggest um, you, you need when you're doing soldering of this type. I have a copper um, tweezers for going into the pickle. Um, Bruce did give me three of the four types of solder. Um, he gave me medium, soft and very soft. Um, I did order some um, strips of solder from Amazon, um, which again um, will be here in about a month's time. What was kind of disappointing is that all the solder I had, none of it is sterling silver solder. A lot of it has lead in it. Um, so I may very well end up throwing all this solder away. The last thing that we haven't discussed is really safety in the operation. Again, a fire extinguisher in the shop. Um, is essential. Um, it was here long before I actually brought the flame in. 
um, the odds of soldering falling on you is pretty high. This is an Oldie Valley leather apron um, that really will keep anything off of me. I do have some cloth ones, but I think this is probably a little bit better. And of course, never to be outdone, um, some safety glasses. And in my case, ones with, that have um, magnifying inserts so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And, and there is one other thing which is not here yet. I will be making up a, a spotlight which is going to fit on the bracket and really give me very good light when I'm working on stuff. Um, and I think that about covers everything um, in terms of the equipment. And I'll go through this in detail and show you how I actually make up the piece. This was the first one I made up. And I have to say it's, it's pretty good, um, but it's not perfect. It's not the jewelry on the model. And that's really what we're, we're about to start making, is brass jewelry that we're going to place at various parts of the model. Now I'll quickly take you through how I set up the system. The first thing is to turn the LPG gas on and you open the valve fully. Um, and then open the torch to make sure you have gas flow. Do the same thing on the oxygen cylinder. Um, keep the settings very low because you don't need a lot of oxygen coming out of the system. Then I set up the permanent flame with my dollar lighter and my free candle from my wife's collection. Um, and that gives me a source of light anytime I need it. And then simply open the gas very carefully and up it comes. And once the flame is at the level I want, then slowly add the oxygen. And we're ready to, to roll. So again, Everything works fine. I'll bring this video to an end and the next time we meet, we'll be actually making up the pieces. So keep modeling.